So apparently modern sucks now. I haven't played a huge amount of modern in a while. I went through a period of playing a lot of combo decks, mainly for like the lol what videos on here, and got quite into Neo form when that became a new thing. But then I sort of focused on Legacy for a while before GV Bologna and the world up to that. I uh, playing playing a lot of Vintage Cube, the 24 hour stream was almost exclusively Vintage Cube. And now I'm starting to expand and reach out into the formats that I haven't played in a while. And well, I guess I've missed Throne of Eldraine's effect on modern for the most part. 2019 was a tumultuous year for magic. It feels like the, not only the power level, but the complexity of cards in general has been pushed. Two things that I quite like in Magic, complex and powerful Magic, but perhaps it's all happening at once throughout all formats. We had the first time cards were put directly into modern, uh, by pissing, by pissing? By passing standard with Modern Horizons. Throne of Eldraine was evidently pushed, and Oko might be one of the most egregious mistakes of all time. I was going to say of recent memory, but Hogak was probably worse. Arkham's Astrolabe and Urza continue to be problems, or at least frustrating cards to play against, and War of the Spark brought all sorts of fucking nonsense that, again, it's fun to play with sometimes, but sometimes it's just not fun to play against. And then Wizards of the Coast, instead of fixing Modern, which is a format people have been complaining has had issues for the longest time, they decided instead to say, here's New Modern. It's called Pioneer. And as much as I actually applaud the decision to make Pioneer, and especially the banning of the Fetchlands due to not only monetary restrictions, but also the idea of like varying the format compared to other formats, I do feel like perhaps they are abandoning other formats like Modern. Anecdotally, the little bit of Modern I've played prior to filming today for this video, I've not played much against Oko or even Urza for that matter. I've played against a lot of red aggro decks, uh, Prowess, Burn, that sort of stuff. Anecdotally, the format hasn't seemed that frustrating to play, but I thought, you know what? Let's bust out Old Faithful. Let's get Green White Death and Taxes. Deck list in the description below. New inclusion of Charming Prince. And let's just see how bad modern feels or whether I enjoy playing modern again. What I also want to know is how you at home feel about the format. Not only do I want to understand how people are feeling about the format in general as a big, I don't know, proponent of a community that talks to each other but also i want to understand do you want to see modern content on this channel is it worth me spending time playing modern recording modern and making modern videos or is modern just dying out in terms of the interest in it are people playing at your local shops i want to hear your anecdotes in the comment section below and finish or focus your anecdote into in the end do you want to see me make modern content or would you prefer me to focus on commander pioneer cube even some limited in the future i guess um, legacy, of course, that sort of stuff. And obviously lots of talking heads and all the varied stuff that I do. But should I move some of the energy out of modern to other things? Or do you enjoy seeing modern memes and decks that I enjoy playing like this and Bant Flick and all that nonsense? With all that out of the way, I guess let's jump into some games. Welcome to Pleasant Kenobi's Slow Play. Playing green, white, death and taxes in a modern league. Let's fucking do it! Here we go, here we go, here we go. We've got a Noble Hierarch on an Eighth Vile, a Thalia, and a Restoration Angel on Path to Exile on two lands. Basically, we have a hand, that's a selection of cards that we put into our deck. But it's a service. Our opponents kept seven. We've kept Bloodstained Mire, Mountain, Haggle. It's some form of dredge. We don't have a Scavenger Goose main board, but you know, never mind. We play Eighth Vile on turn one and pass back. Copper Lane Gorge brings back Bloodgast. Tick up our Vile, shock ourselves with Temple Garden, and make a Thalia. Pass back to our opponent. They bother attacking? No, nope, they do not. They also miss a land drop. Oh, yes. Sometimes I stay up all night to get lucky. Other times my opponent misses a land drop in Magic the Gathering, and I get aroused. Giver of Runes off of our fresh draw. I'm going to play the Giver of Runes. I'm going to attack for three, because we need to kill him eventually. That'll put our shields down for a turn and allow them to attack us back without us really blocking, but the following turn we'll have a Restoration Angel online. Our opponent gets in for two. Predictable. We go to 16. They hit their third land drop. They shock themselves. Yep. Go to 14. They're just playing a Merchant of the Veil. Is that, is that their plan here? Yep. Doesn't seem too hot. Is Dredge even a thing anymore? Got my Vial. Draw a Gavinity Township, which is actually pretty good. Get in with Thalia for three. Take them to 11. And then we can surprise Resto on tap our Thalia next combat. Our current discards and then draws a card off of the Motion of Hell's activated ability. They discarded uh, the, the, the imp thing. They've dredged. They've creeping chilled us. 14 to 13. Life from the loam in the graveyard so they can begin dredging ongoing. The problem they've had is they've had enough dredges. They attack with Bloodgast. We flash in Resto. 
Reset Arthalia. It's actually safer to block with the first strike because they can't like follow up some damage off of a land. There'll be a land post combat to bring the blood gas back, I assume. We will no longer be taking up our Aether Vile. We drew another Noble High Rot. We're gonna play it. We're gonna attack for five in the air. I am not gonna gather any here. I'm gonna keep Path to Exile up for the moment. They dredge. They hit a conflagrate in their graveyard. That's a thing. They have eight cards in their hand. Then they're gonna loan back some more cards, including lands, so they can actually play a land for the turn and get conflagrate online. They conflagrate our team. Our Gavany Township will save our Thalia. Our Giver of Wounds can save a Noble High Rock. Giver and both High Rocks will die to this conflict. So Thalia will survive this. We're going to save one of our uh, Noble High Rocks here. And now they're just dead, right? We untap. Exile their Haggler. Activate Gavany. I love Gavany Township. That's a card that people don't respect. Not anymore, anyway. Once upon a time, people respect it. And we won game one against... Post faithless looting dredge. On the draw, we've got a hand of Noble Hierarch into Rest in Peace and a Thalia and a Blade Splice. So, what more could you want, my friends? What more could you want? We're actually only on one rip at the moment because we've got one rip, one skews, and one Relic of Genesis in our sideboard. Also, as far as I understood it, the Graveyard decks aren't really an issue in modern right now. And then we paired against dredge immediately. Now, the question is whether you just slam rip on turn two and then they get to blow it up with their whatever their sideboard hate for enchantments and artifacts is, or whether we try and get them to commit to dredging a little bit first and then we get, 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 get them. Will we get a lightning axed? Let's find out. No lightning axe. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. What a foothills from our opponent, which means I'm assuming they're keeping up some sort of interaction for the, for the rest in peace they're expecting. In which case, I'm just going to play a Thalia and then we'll rip them next turn. Or the turn after. I don't think we need to rip them right this second. I guess against DNT as well, they could be just not wanting to tap out in case we go like Arbiter into Ghost Quarter. They've shocked themselves. I'm assuming this is a removal spell on Arthalia now. They decided not to bolt the bird, but they did discard Nature's Claim. Does that mean they have a second Nature's Claim, or this rip is going to be real brutal? Cathartic Reunion. They also discarded an Abrupt Decay there. Jeez, okay. They're looking for land drops, but they're discarding a lot of anti-rip hay, which is really interesting. There are no dredges in the bins. I don't even know if getting them with Rest in Peace right now is the correct thing to do. I've decided that actually I'm going to develop my board state for one turn, then rip them next turn. This way we have a, a sizable clock and or ability to block next turn. The worst case scenario here is that the Cathartic Reunion discarding multiple dredges and hit multiple Narcomoebas and multiple Amalgams. Uh, okay, they hit, <laughs> they hit one dredger and one Bloodgast to the bin. They hit a Creeping Chill. They hit one Poised Amalgam. But do they have a land for the Bloodgast? That's the question. I don't think they do, because they drew. Oh, they do have a land for the Bloodgast. They do get a Poison Amalgam out of this as well. So they get the Amalgam back. We drew a land. So now we can play two creatures. We rest in peace them. We attack with our Golem. For four. Takes them to 15. We then do one of my favourite things in Magic, which is Flick Wisp with Blade Splicer. What? Ah. Whoopa! Yeah, buddy! If White isn't allowed to draw cards, because Wizards of the Coast convinced that White drawing cards would be an absolutely horrendous colour pie break, meanwhile every other colour gets to draw cards, I guess we're going to have to generate our own virtual card advantage through flickering. I wish they'd print better flicker effects, and then not have them banned, because they accidentally combo with another planeswalker in the same set. Cast a Stinkweed Imp. I can kill my flicker with, so it wasn't for the path to exile in my hand. How do we draw an Arbiter? Not bad, not bad. Could Wisp again this turn, but I'd rather get one, like, you cannot search, do not pass go sort of moment. So, yeah, I'm into it. And that's it. They've seen enough. Learn an Arbiter in play, Path to Exile on the stack. Honey, I'm home. Okay, yeah, this is fine. This is no turn one play into a Thalia, into a Charming Prince. We're getting Thought Seized. Nope, we're getting a Viscera Seer played. Okay, interesting. We play a Tap Land and Pass. Bloodgast. Interesting. This seems to be something that I wasn't expecting. This was, uh, could be one of Black Vampires. It could be some sort of Pox slash uh, Aristocrats deck. I was more expecting from Viscera to see it as some sort of, sort of Malira style combo deck, but there we go. There we go. We've drawn a Noble Hierarch. Next turn I might play Hierarch on the path, but for now, well, that said Thalia would stop me doing that, but for now I'm going to play Thalia as it's a decent blocker. Oh wow, it is Vampire Tribal. This is, uh, not what I expected. Another high rock, so I guess I play both my high rocks out and take a lot of damage next turn. This is where they're playing like uh, Theros era Bile Blight as their removal spell, and they get both my nobles, and I feel very fucking silly. I mean, we've got Blade Splice into Charming Prince, into Flicker Wisp, into Restoration Angel. We can make a lot of fucking golems, so that should be fine. And by fine, I mean like a actually good against a black aggro deck. Whew, that pumps their entire team by discarding a card. That's pretty good. 
No attacks, I'm fine with that. We draw the land, which I'm also fine with. And then, do I, like, Charming Prince my Splicer now? Or do I pass two cards in hand? They seem to be aggressive, so I'm not so scared of the combo potential of Viscerous here at this point. Well, Charming Prince is a new card, so I kind of have to, right? I could attack my 4-4 Thalia, but they're an aggressive deck, so I think having blockers is important. And we have a fucking lot of blockers now. I dislike being shields down. I wish I had our path up. But next time we can have path up. And, uh, and a restoration angel if we draw land. They crack their bloodstained mire. No attacks from our opponent. <laughs> I guess profitable attacks are difficult. We have so much first strike. We draw Gaffney Township because it's sometimes it's just better to be lucky than it is to be good. We're going to swing with a Blade Splicer token here. So let's get in with a Golem. It's a 5-5. Five five. They can block with the Blood Gas. No, they can't. It says... It literally says, can't block on it. They take five. Sweet. We can now get up Path to Exile and Restoration Angel, and then, failing that, just Gavany on the end of their turn. They are going to discard a Voldarin Parish. Pariah? Parish? Pariah. What does this thing do? Flying, sacrifice three other creatures, transform it. And when it transforms, target opponent sacrifices three creatures. Well, I guess that's a very good path target. Okay. So they madness this. And play it for triple black. Growing their team. Why would they not do that during combat? I don't know. Now they sacrifice three creatures. I just path it and love life. But I have to exile it as they go to sack the creatures. Not after it's flipped. Being an important distinction. Sorin. Wow. Okay. This bolts things, right? Yeah, it does. Oh, sorry. It doesn't bolt things. It helixes things. Okay. So what vampire did they sack? The Bloodgast, I assume? Yes, that does make sense. And then they shoot what with the uh, with the bolt? The Blade Splicer? A Golem? The Blade Splicer. Wow, this is not going to turn out how you probably wanted it to, my friend. But it was worth a shot. It was certainly worth a shot. Restoration Angel saves Blade Splicer from Sorin, which is flavorful, as Restoration Angel is originally from... Uh, the first Innistrad block. Or a ball brings back Blood Gas. They play a Knight of the Ebon Legion. They have no cards in hand either. So they can't even pump their team from this when we swing next turn. We drew another path. Okay. Interesting. So we're going to attack Soren and kill him. They can block with their 3-3 three, three and flip it to a 6-5 in some attempt to to get me. Or attempt to flip it to a 6-5. It won't, it won't happen. I mean, even if it did flip, we have a lot of body. The other option here was just like cracking in with everything and gavening, but that means we don't have path to kill the Voldaren, so we'd lose three bodies before we even got to damage. I might end up pathing the Voldaren of Pariah and then them sacking three things and then me pathing it again. So if they second another three things, then sure. Scry with the Bloodgast, sure. Our vampire opponent doesn't attack. I guess I just grow my team. Like, if they flip the pariah were okay with it they did not flip the pariah well okay then <laughs> i guess we're gonna start slamming in then nope okay they don't they don't want to play anymore i i kind of understand why i just clicked submit because i was reading a tweet on twitter about someone saying that revenge of the sith is the best star wars uh, retweeted by riley knight and i just clicked just clicked to proceed without changing anything they are playing fetches, so I'm going to keep the Arbiters in. Oh, no, okay. I'm playing the same 60 because I didn't sideboard. Because I was bowled over. Bowled over by the audacity of Will Campos saying that. Actually, to be honest, I don't, I don't blame him. Attack of the, uh, uh, the Revenge of the Sith is a... Is a, uh, a movie with heart, I think, is, is the point he's getting to. Anyway, moving on. What if they keep the Bloodstained Myers up to like be better with their Black Gusts? And then we'll play an Arbiter and they can't. And we'll be like, haha, I got you. Nope, they cracked it anyway. Stormkirk Condemned. Sure, 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 sure. Leonin Arbiter. Giver of Runes. And pass back the turn. They discard an event Bloodgast and they play a land. I see. That's a free Bloodgast, essentially. I like it. Then they sacrifice the Bloodgast to kill my Arbiter or kill my Giver. They attack, which makes sense as well. We get hit. We drew a Restoration Angel, which isn't exactly what I wanted. I wanted another land, ideally. We're going to turn a witness back our Giver of Runes. And then we're going to attack Sorin for three. Next turn, if they hit a land drop, they can play the Blood Ghast again, uptick Sorin, shoot my Arbiter, I guess. But as long as we've got a turn of witness in play in full mana, we're going to be able to Restoration all our turn of witnesses and hopefully going them out. They could, of course, just put a fucking vampire in from their hand as well. So Mewful brings up Bloodgust. 
They shoot my Noble Hierarch deck because they realise we're low on mana. Interesting, interesting. They play a second Stormcook con con Condemned. Stromkirk. I keep saying Stormkirk. It's Strom. It's Stromkirk. I also like how they got multiple hands. That's really cool. They're going to attack and discard a card, I think, and we're going to take a... Wait, why did they animate the Mute Vault? I'm not sure. I'll take two. Animating the Mute Vault there seemed... Oh, oh they didn't realize that summoning sickness, I guess. So to protect their Sorin now, they have to block with the Stormkirk. Stromkirk, should I say. Oh, no, nope, they're going to grow it with Eviscera Seer into the bin. We'll play Giver of Runes. We'll draw a third land eventually. I should attack with an internal witness as well. I won't lie to you, chat, and friends at home, and everyone in the comment section. In my head, this was a 3-3 because of the Noble Hierarch that's now currently dead. So yeah, that wasn't so hot. Kill my giver again, sure. These cats are locked, Wayne. If this game goes long enough, we're going to draw them enough cards to uh, off put the uh, card disadvantage of the strong cook condemned. It's pretty good. Oh, they are activating it now. They are on 26 life as well. Well, 28 before that. So It's not like it has much of a downside right now. Oh, that is a creature indeed. Really want to just draw a land, you know? That's close to being a land, I guess. They can block and discard a card here, but I think I'm okay with that. I mean, they aren't doing it on the aggressive side of things. Bring back Path to e I'm going to have to chump this Knight of the Ebon... Knight of the Ebenezer Scrooge, because Charming Prince needs to... Needs to get in there and just take one for the team, essentially. Another Knight of the Ebenezer Scrooge. They draw a card of the Castle Lothwain so they can pump their team this turn. It's a vampire, they could just put it in off the Sorin. Yeah. I'm just going to give that creature Death Touch, okay. I guess we don't block this turn because at most we're taking six. Next turn we could have a mute vault swinging at us as well, which means we're going to be in serious trouble. I want to draw a land real bad here. Nope. That's the best other draw, though, on the upside. Okay, we're going to have to just ignore this Sorin for a turn and keep our creatures back on blocks. Hmm. Hopefully they swing out and discard cards, try and kill us, and then we can just path them to kill them. Yep. Okay. <laughs> oh no! The devil blood cast in the graveyard! Oh my goodness. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and path this one. Their synergy is strong. Our deck is doing fucking nothing. This is uh, incredibly tilting, but... Okay. Let's actually cyborg this time. Okay, we're on the play this time around. <laughs> oh my god, there. Oh my god, this is going to have to be a mulligan. From two lands to all the lands. Okay, if they kill this, we probably can't play any magic. <sighs> Fucking hell. Okay. We've got a Field of Ruin in hand. I wish it was a Ghost Quarter. We're playing four Ghost Quarters and one Field of Ruin or two Field of Ruin, I can't remember. That's the push. So the game is now probably over. Oh no, we actually drew exactly what we needed. So I can stop tilting now. I keep saying Stormco. Stromkirk condemned from our opponent. Make a blade splicer and pass back. They've cracked a fetch without paying for the arbiter, so that's uh that's something I guess. I wonder if we're gonna get a chat message now. They're gonna push my Oh dear, that could have gone very differently. That was very unfortunate for them. Killing our blade splicer means we don't get to make like infinite three threes, which is good for them. Yeah, that fetch land was brutal. We drew a noble hierarch. We can attack for three. 
Oh, sorry, attack for four because Noble Hierarch is ridiculous. And then I guess I'm just going to Charming Prince for the scry feature now. I guess Fix is a pretty good blocker and Wisp's also pretty good. Kind of want Landsmith to act like much a lie, but. I guess Wisp can reset my Charming Prince and I can scry another two. Cordial Vampire. Okay. That uh, grows the entire team when things die. That's kind of scary. We draw a wisp. Let's get in for three. Four, Vince. God damn it, Vince. They're going to block and discard some cards, I'd assume. They discard Call of the Bloodline to pump their team. Sure. So the Stromcoat will die. This will not. This will get. They'll both get countless thanks to this. Two counters, actually. This card's actually surprisingly good. Uh, surprising. By surprising, I mean we don't see it very often. I guess I'm going to reset their Knight of the Ebon Hand. There we go, there we go, there we go. Stormcoat condemned. Sure, 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 sure. We drew the Sphinx that we knew about. We go to combat and we attack. Looks like they're screwed on mana now, thanks to Lena and Arbiter, so I cannot complain. We get in for four in the air. Take them to 11. Then I guess I just play another flyer and that gives us hex proof. They can pay, get the land, and now they can push my Shalai. I'll just play a Vicious here. Okay. Now they can sack parts of their board to grow their entire team with Cordial Vampire. I like this. This is actually really cool. Flavorful, too. I also think that Vicious is holding like a novelty heart. It doesn't look like a real human heart. It looks like one of those ones you'd buy from like a Halloween party. So how creatures to grow this? They discard a card to grow this? Because if they do four points of damage to us, this grows. Second creature would be incredibly dangerous simply because then they might have we have Mouth Lethal if we draw a removal spell. Draw a spyglass, which is pretty good. But playing the spyglass, well, we could name the viscera seer, which is definitely something. The tap for six in the air. I always need to double check like which vampires can fly and which ones can't. Or what their abilities give them in terms of flying and such. Shalai is so good. Even without the set third line. Maybe I'm a bit unforgiving to her being a green white creature. When in reality she's actually still good enough to just be a very good white creature. So a spyglass to peep at their hand. How about that? Oh, Flickwisp is also lethal here. So we can attack with that. And then have to kill the Shalai and the Wisp. So they'd need both Fatal Push and Dismember. And they'd have to do it now before combat. Because of the spyglass coming down that can name the Viscrasia. So they can't easily... Enable. Oh, there is a Voldaren Pariah. Does it target when it transforms? Yep, they can't actually target us to make us sack stuff because of Shalai. It's pretty good. Now, do they sack things now to it and then realize they can't target us because of Shalai and then lose the game? Or do they let us go to combat? Interesting. They let it resolve. Okay. I guess we're going to name Viscerous here then. And attack with our 5 3 double exalted Flicker Wisp, which kills them if they don't block with their 4 4 Voldaim Pariah, which they can now like pump up. No, they can't because we stop them from sacking parts of the team. Oh, the problem is it becomes a 6-5 plus the plus 1 plus 1 from this. Oh, okay. It's now a 10-9. We don't have to sack anything. We lose our Wisp. Sure. Four, they have two cards in hand. Three mana available. They have a 10-9 flyer and a 7-7. Seven, seven. I forgot about the fact that they got pumped by discarding cards to the Strom Kirk Condemned in order to actually play it for Madness Cost. So that was dumb. What other cards in their hand is a Swamp? We know this. They're currently dead on board, I believe. Rest in peace is not what we wanted to see. We do have a field of ruin, though, actually, so maybe they are dead on board. And then we attack with Alina and Arbiter, Charming Prince, Shalai, and Kitchen Finks. They're on four. This means they're dead, because the last card in their hand is a swamp. <laughs> they try to psych us out by tapping some mana at the end. Oh, you got me, friend. Ah, oh, that minimal game was so frustrating, but then our opponent, I guess, must have been very frustrated when the Narb told them that, sorry, you have to be mana screwed now. Oh, good old cat Jesus.
We have won the dive all, oh, and I'm putting my slippers on because my feet are. These are the famous slippers that Bravo decided to sleep in on Monday Night Stream. The adorable little fuck. Okay, we've got a hand of Giver of Runes into Charming Prince. It's not the best in the world, but it's not the worst either. Off we go. They crack a misty rainforest and fetch a watery grave. Is this Death Shadow of some kind? Thoughts is going to take our Charming Prince or our Path to Exile if they've got a hand. Or a handful of answers, should I? They take our Path to Exile, so I guess they've got a handful of threats. They, they want to protect or a handful of answers for this. It's either answers or threats, really. I mean, that's not really the most profound thing I've ever said. They've got some kind of cards in their hand. Scry to Vince and shut up. Eighth of our invasive of ticket. We're going to put those in the bottom of our library. There's the power of Scry. We probably would have lost if we drew those cards against some sort of mid-range deck that's going to want to go toe for toe. Toe for toe? Tip for tat? I don't fucking know what I'm saying. Words! Oh, look, a Snowland. I haven't seen one of those in a while. Actually, did I see any in round one or two? I'm not even sure. Engineered explosives for two. Okay. Drawing a wisp would be pretty nice now that he's at the zero. Nope. Get in for two. Spell bomb. Okay. This is uh, some form of Urza deck then, right? Go to eight. They did actually mill both Urza and Gilded Goose. So we are finally seeing one of the menaces of the format. I wonder how many basics they play. Let's find out in their draw step. So they do play a basic forest. That's nice to know. Blow up my Charming Prince. We play the... We play it with Emery, I guess? Oh no, they'll just play the bubble. EE -E for one, because Giver of Runes is in my hand. Clever, clever, clever. Activate Storing Wildwood. For three. Take them to five. Play a Giver of Runes that they can blow up, but it will cost them two mana to do so, so I'm kind of okay with it. So according to like Goldfish, the uh, the normal like Bug or Saltai Urza decks play like five islands and one forest. Oh, and a swamp in this case. So actually I don't think we're gonna easily take them off of basics. They re they play a mox up a lot of hand and they replay the bobble out of the graveyard. Oh they've just got an Oko. Okay. Okay. I think we might be losing this game, Emery Urza and Oko in play. Frustratingly, we've got like a Wisp and a Resto here. I guess Resto and the Wisp on their end step will be pretty strong against them. So they've got an Aether Spell Bomb in play, so... And Giver of Runes does allow us to protect the Flicker Wisp from the Oko if they mess up too. We're going to reset our land in case we have to play Resto in their turn. We've also got end step Resto mana. So the, the thing we're dead to is them playing the Spell Bomb out of the graveyard with Emery. I say dead too, it stops us from killing them, but if we don't kill them the next turn or so, they're, they're just going to run us over with huge amounts of card quality and card advantage. They're playing the Spell Bomb out of the bin. Hopefully Spell Bomb in their turn now. We can give protection from Colorless now and they go for it. Go, my Restoration Angel. Solve all the issues we've ever had. What is this going to be? Is this a counter spell? <laughs> okay, they had it all. They had it all. Okay, so we weren't beating that. We weren't beating them having exactly that, so we're going to have to try again. Collector Oof's going to be pretty good if they don't have the removal spell for it. Oko being the problem, but uh, wizards don't really give a shit about modern, so uh, they ain't banning anything right now. One Oofy boy. They'll crack their bauble now. There we go. There we go. Then we just want to do a Ghost Quarter next turn so we can go Arbiter into Ghost Quarter and then we might actually have them in a situation where they can't, like, recover. They're missing a land drop. Sweet. They discarded an Emery. Sweet. This is going to be pretty good if they have Fetch Lands in hand because then the Arbiter stops them from fetching. We attack them with 3-3 three, three Collector Oof. They hit their second land drop. Discarding the Emery means they must have another Emery in hand, right? Like, why Why would they not just top that next turn? Do they have a push here for my Arbiter? Oh, for the Oof. That does make more sense, to be fair. Fucking Metallic Rebuke, man, honestly. Such a fucking joke. It's the fact that it gets improvised with the Astrolabes. 
That's the that's the problem I have with it. It's just so frustrating. But then again, that's just a problem with Astrolabe in general, right? More so than anything else. They hit a land drop. Double Arbiter is a problem there. I'm going to flick out their food as well as so they have three mana next turn. They pushed one of the Arbiters. Okay, sure. Do they have another Metallic Rebuke somehow? So in flicking the food out, the Gilded Goose is making mana now. So they're not going to like cast an Oko next turn, for example. Uh, they're still two mana off an Urza, an Urza as well. So we are doing the traditional DNT thing of trying to disrupt them off of their game plan. They could go push, land drop, crack the Misty, make an Oko. And then they can Oko my Skoos. Now we've still got quite a bit of power in play on the upside. But then you have that fun game of like, do you even do you even attack the Oko at that point or go for face? Because if you kill the Oko, they play another Oko. The other option is they can play an Oko after a push and uh, Elk, one of their Astrolapes. All of these things seem pretty good for them. Yeah, Oko's a, a joke and shouldn't exist. <laughs> but that's not like a, that's not a profound statement either, is it? Like we're all fully fucking aware of this statement. So that's just trophy my scoops. Interesting. Can't fetch for the Arbiter, so that was just a free Vindicate. We drew an Eternal Witness, which is pretty good here. So we're going to attack. Then we're going to go Eternal Witness for Collector Oof. Get the Koof back into my hand. They can still improvise, I believe, which fucks me off immensely. Okay, we got them in game two. Okay, this is unkeepable, so we're going to mulligan this one lander. Ah, this is significantly worse than last game's hands, right? But I think I keep it. Let's bottom the field of ruin. That way we can cast all our spells. I guess we want to draw like Noble Hierarch into Blade Splicer into Collector Oof is probably our best like uh draws, I think. They're cracking their fetches. They're thought seizing me, maybe. Yep. Let's mold to six, get thought seized. The old adage. We drew a Gavany. Okay, well, if we continue to draw only lands, then we've lost the game. I probably should have gone to five. I probably should have gone to five, especially when we knew they had thought season game one. Okay, not a bad draw. They cycled their Aether Spellbomb. They don't play an Oko, which is nice, but they would kick it with Metallic Rebuked, which uh, isn't nice. Um, let's go ahead and play the Horizon Canopy they know about. Play the Noble Hierarch. Keep up path for an Urza. Sanctuary back the Thoughtseize on the top of Library. Cool, 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 cool. Cast an Urza. Cool, 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 cool. Make a creature. Path the Urza. Do I path the construct as well? Probably. Wait, what? Oh, fuck. I clicked my own noble. That was a... <laughs> I don't... I was a million miles away considering whether or not this is the correct line. Like, thinking it through as I went, I should have paused before I'd finished thinking. Oops. I, I guess I meant to make the mana? I just went to autopilot mode and fucked that up. Oh my goodness, that was, uh... That was bad. That was real bad. At least we can gaffer our empty board next turn, and they still have a construct. Jesus Christ, and a bike. That was horrendous. On the upside, it doesn't change what we can do this turn. It just means we have one less creature in play, and, and they have one more creature in play. Actually, that's a huge, huge margin when you think about it, right? There's an okay. Okay, what are they going to elk? My blade splicer? Nope, they're going to elk their own mox opal. They don't need any more mana. Cool, okay, well we need to uh, draw well, shall I say. That's not drawing well, but whatever. Let's get in and attack them. No blocks, okay. I'm just going to pump our team. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, well, our opponent has had it all. Like, uh, no word of a lie, no exaggeration. 
uh, when we have not had any gas, they've had all the gas. I don't know if I'm missing something in terms of the card advantage they're generating to be able to have it all. Because this is the thing. When I talk about people having it all, a lot of the time what happens is your opponents will uh, have played in a way that got them to a stage where they can have it, inverted commas. You know, when you make them have it and they have it. However, <laughs> fucking hell. We have not had it. I should have drawn a card off the horizon, but I'm too tilted. Uh, okay, I should have probably played that out, but... No, I don't know. It's an active Oko. And I, I... The great thing about like this deck, I guess, against the Oko Menace is that Flicker Wisp and Charming Prince can reset Poots that have been Elked and you still get the ETB value when they come back. Um, but yeah, I felt like I was getting unlucky and then I fucking punted as well. Like That, that Plowing Your Own Noble was just fucking horrendous. But yeah, okay. I can see why people find this frustrating. Playing a deck that has Urza, Mox Opal, and Oko in it, and to a lesser extent Emery... Yeah, that doesn't feel like a, a fun time. It feels like a, a collection of design mistakes that are punching you in the face. Hey, listen! Right, we can keep this hand. We've got a removal spell. We've got three drop into four drop. Uh, Hierarch would make it really good, but we don't have one. Beggars cannot be choosers and all that. Okay, are we going to get thoughts? Oh, is this the same deck again? No, it's not. Cool. Some sort of Sitsu Supplier, Bridge from Below, but without Bridge from Below. <laughs> We drew an Aether Fire, which is... I mean, I want to path the Stitch Supply next turn, depending on whether, like, they have Sack Outlets. Is Alter even still legal? Hedron Crown. They're going to mill themselves, I assume. Yep, Creeping Chill us. Crack their fetch. Find a blood... Get the blood gas back. Mill themselves again. Nice. Blood gas comes back. Make surprised Amalgam. Play the Grave Crawl out of the bin. Look at that. That is a powerful turn two. My uh, turn two plow your Hedron Crab's not looking so hot. We take one from the Stitch Supplier. Guess we want to draw Giver of Runes or Noble Hierarch to plow for our Vile from that. So we're going to plow shares them. Crab, I think, is the... We do it on their draw step in case they've drawn the only basic they've got. Or, uh, and also gives them the tap turn. Grizzly Salvage. Vengevine. Okay. But they don't have the lands to cast the spells, though. We get attacked for a whole fucking bunch. We might be able to stabilize, maybe. They can make that Vengevine next turn. Charming Prince would be our best draw here. Well, hello there. Ideally, we need our 1-1 one -one to survive to the following round so that we can actually make a... A force that can win this. Uh, we also need to like gain some life somehow, and I don't know how we're going to do that in the main deck. We have one Knight of Autumn that we, we will have an insurmountable force of like golden blockers soon. Uh, Creeping Chill now means that we're just dead. Is that how this works? Yeah. They can... Wow. Our Blade Spicer has to die here, or Noble has to we do this. Go to one. We're dead to any Creeping Chill. <laughs> they got a Vengevine. Two Vengevines in the graveyard as well. Once upon a time. Not another Merfolk Secret Keeper. Oh, they mill themselves again and hit double Creeping Chill. So we're not just dead, we're doubly dead. Okay, I would love to play. Yeah, sure. Play an Arbiter, hopefully, before they crack all their fetches and then uh, love life. Maybe. Tap land, go. So opponent lead into a crab. The great thing about this deck is that they will go with the fetch lands later than most decks will, simply because it powers out their uh, crabs. And that means... Or powers up their crabs, should it? <laughs> Okay, okay, I guess the hand was full of fetch lands then. Uh, I guess we could say we, we got them. Okay, we have another hand with Arbiter, and it was pretty good last time, right? So I guess we're just going to keep this and uh, go for a bit of the old uh, player cat. Hope cat kills. Kills them. Cat Jesus. P pray, pray. Verdant Catacombs crack it. Oh, they're learning! <laughs> no, they're learning! Don't thought seize me. Don't thought seize me to take the cat. Okay, we're all good. Damn it, they're learning. Okay... Eighth of all. Not a bad first turn pickup. The frustrating thing about the adventure zone is that it just gets in the fucking way. But let's put it over there. Stitch the supplier hits. Vine, don't we? Ugh. Yep. Play the secret keeper. Yep. We get Ford in the face. Our stirring wall will, will one day block this and trade with it. <laughs> They're free four three trading with our four mana investment tapped land. Ugh. Magic is rough. A Giver of Runes or Noble Hierarchs, our best draw here. We did not. We play an Arbiter, which will hopefully at least hinder them in some way. Not if one can undo some of the damage the Vengevine is doing. They're paying costs. Is it a Dismember or something? It's an Abrupt Decay on our Arbiter. Sure. They get in for five. Arbiter's doing all right. Arbiter's doing all right. Uh, Charming Prince will be our best draw here. Uh, Thalia or Arbiter would also be just a two drop, basically, but Charming Prince again being the best one. That's a Blade Splicer. Not 
Right, time to try and stabilize. That's where they hit multiple creeping chills and multiple vengevines and multiple grave crawlers, isn't it? And we're just like, well, fuck. Hard casting amalgams isn't the best spot for our opponent. I'm okay with that. We drew a kitchen fix. Which is a pretty good magic card. Next time we have Governor Township online as well. Attack them. Nope, that's a zero four. Can't attack for it. <laughs> There's literally no reason to. On a time, what do they find? You can find a secret found a hedron crab. Heard that card's pretty good in their deck. Do they attack here? No, they do not. We're gonna activate our Aether Vial in their second main phase. We're gonna flick a wisp, target our blade splice, so that'll go out. Then in end step it'll come back. Sweet. Then we're going to untap, and now we have Gavany, and we have Vile on three. Drew another Vile, which is... I guess I'm just going to attack in the air and can't block, I'm going to Gavany. And then I can make a Knight in their turn. Uh, it can blow up any sort of problematic sideboard nonsense that they might have. Don't think they'll have any. Oh, doesn't matter. We got there. Okay, we beat Crabvine. Is that the name? I'm so out of touch with modern, I don't even know what the decks are called anymore. Crabvine. Right, I'm going to call it Crabvine. And then we'll figure it out later. Final round. Okay, first, yep, yeah, okay, right, cool. Turn one, Noble Highway. Turn two, Blaze Splicer. This is pretty good, this is pretty good. There are two openings that I like in this deck the most. One is turn one, Hierarch into, okay, there's three openings, there's three. <laughs> God, I'm gonna keep adding them, aren't I? Number one, Noble Hierarch into Lean and Arbiter with Ghost Quarter to Ghost Quarter your opponent on turn two is one of the most powerful plays the deck has. The second against more mid-range decks is Noble Hierarch into Blade Splicer. And the third, don't be elves, don't be elves, don't be elves. It's some sort of lands deck. It's not Elves, Twitter Storm. Uh, Go loss. I don't know. And the third is just playing an Aether Vile. Because Aether Vials are good. Aether Vials are good. Well, I guess I'm going to play Vile. Then Thalia. Just to be efficient with my mana. I guess that makes it obvious that I drew the Vile. Because otherwise I should have played it the other way around. So then I could make the Hierarch this turn and the Thalia. Could have attacked. No, could have attacked. What the fuck am I talking about? This can't be an Oko because of the Thalia. It's a three mana explore. Still an explore, I guess, at the end of the day. Do they hit another land drop though? Oh, it's Amulet. Oh, another boogeyman of the format, I believe. Okay, well, we need a blade split. No, so we need a flicker wish to flicker like a. Or maybe it's not Amulet, but a version of Amulet that isn't playing Amulet anymore. Is that going to name Giant? It's going to name Giant, right? Yep. Incoming Primeval Titan next turn. I guess I just path it. Uh, and then hope they haven't got another one in hand. Do we have to keep up path in case they just slam a Primeval Titan? It'd be even funnier if they slammed a Frost Titan. Because then I couldn't shoot it. Because I'd be one mana short. Isn't it an additional two? Yeah, one time no Frost Titan, please. On the upside, the Frost Titan wouldn't get any real ETB value other than tapping down a land or a vial or something. I mean, I'm saying all this hypothetically. No one's playing Frost Titan. Ugh, how the fuck do we beat this? Gotta draw Ghost Quarter now. Okay, so they don't have a they don't have a Titan right now. They do have a Field of the Dead, which means our paths actually give them Zombos. So we could have developed our board. Never mind. Ghost Quarter off the top, please. Uh, Gavney's not terrible. Gavney is not terrible. Okay, let's get in for three. The problem is, if we don't draw wisps and such to flicker our blades, we're never going wide enough to really get there. I guess I need to develop my board this turn. So that we can actually do something with this Gavany. So I don't want them to hit land drops, nor do I want them to hit titans. Both of those things are quite likely, given the uh, the deck that we appear to be playing against. So no lands, no titan. I hope the hand is just full of explore. Two more explores. Two explores. Burden, Bonsini, Chidi. Weedy, beady. This is a Garenberg activation for a Titan. Yes. It looks like it is. Okay. So this is going to make two Zombos as well. Shut up, watch. That was my smartwatch. Not understanding what a Primeval Titan is. Weird. Um, yeah, they're going to make some Zombos. And that's not going to be good for us. Oh, fuck. My old boots, that is not good. The Blast Zone's also not good. I don't think we're winning this first game. Field of the Dead was a mistake. I'm just going to go out there and say it. Maybe we should have shot the prime time before we let that resolve, because it's now going to give them two more zombies as opposed to one. Yeah, I really feel like the Field of the Dead was a mistake. 
Like the the advantage. So I, I'm saying this because we played a league of um, a bug singleton recently in a in a in a on a stream on a Monday night, and we lost to Field of the Dead with a Liliana of the Last Hope emblem active. I guess we want to draw Deputy of Detention, which we don't have access to. Oh come on! Fucking Ghost Quarter, honestly. I guess we just ghost quarter one of these field of the dead. That's nine. It's eighteen power attacking next turn. Yeah. Nope. That's twenty power attacking next turn. Jesus Christ. Okay. I guess to survive, I've got to path one of them. Throw Blake's place under the bus as well. <sighs> Summoners packed for another primeval time, which can make some two more zombos. At least we have an answer for the prime time, but it doesn't really solve the whole 20 power. Crater Hearth Behemoth. Oh, I feel so fucking betrayed right now. I feel so fucking betrayed right now. Okay, well, that's a, that's that's that then. Okay. F fuck. Now, traditionally, we have quite a good amulet matchup because we have our deck with uh, Leon and Arbiters. Ghost Quarters and Flicker Wisps, because with uh, off of a Eighth of R, you can instant speed a Flicker Wisp and really get him in response to an untapped trigger and things like that. This version that we just saw, <laughs> whole different ball game, and that felt really rough. I think this hand looks pretty good. We could do with an Arbiter or a Mind Sensor. I wonder if Mind Sensor is going to be good now in, in modern. And by good, I mean like good tier two, right? Because <laughs> it does feel like a. Uh, if you're not playing the Urza deck, then what are you doing? Turn one to Kuro Tribe Scout. Sure, 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 sure. Would love to kill that with like a Walking Ballista or something, but our deck doesn't even play that. We can path it, I guess. Sure. I guess. That just gives them the land anyway, but I guess it doesn't let them do it stuff later with it. So I'm going to path it and... Mm, does that really achieve anything? Tell me in the conversation below whether you'd path this now. And they're going to get two lands off it otherwise, right? I'm then going to Charming Prince and Scry 2 in order to dig for a Linon Arbiter. Castle Garen Brick. Sure, 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 sure. Triple Green, Alvish Rejuvenator. How many put lands into play creatures can you possibly play? 12? 4 Rejuvenator, 4 Realm Razor, whatever the hell it's called. Realm Sloth, and 4 Secure Tribe Scout. What land will it hit? An island. I might be looking at a fucking prime time next turn unless we go squat them. Aye, aye, aye. I wonder how many basics they're playing. Blade Splicer, okay. I'm going to Ghost Quarter them and draw set to get rid of this Garen Brig. Because I just, I just don't want them tightening me on turn three. I mean, Ghost Quarter can arguably deal with Field of the Dead as well. But if they tighten, that's multiple Field of the Dead we've got to deal with. So this seems correct. Now, old amulet lists, at one time or another, when I played a lot of modern, I only played two basics. But here we are on quad basics. Oh, fuck. Why is so much blue? What is that for these days? Oko? Fucking Oko. Explore, sure. For three mana because of Thalia. Sweet, 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 sweet as a nut. Blast zone. That can kill my threats. Field of the dead. Oh, grumble, grumble, grumble. Now we've got to deal with both of these with our singular ghost quarter. Ugh. So I didn't bring in Sorcerer Spyglass and I definitely should have done. Player Blade Splicer. Play a Temple Card and tapped. Go to Combat and Attack for four. And then I'm going to Ghost Court the Field of Dead in their draw step. Because the problem is, Field of Dead makes more blockers than this will kill attackers, if that makes sense. So, goodbye, Field of Dead. One time, no basic. One time, no basic? Come on, you have to play five, but why is it supposed to play some of the basics? You think it's the format gets. Oh my goodness! Another one! <laughs> Fuck it out. Oh, okay. This is gonna be a Titan, which we can't attack through with our current board state. 
This is going to get a Field of the Dead as well, I think, but it won't make any zombos. I guess the other one wasn't making zombies for a while either, but you just can't risk it, you know? they got to pay for this next turn. I wonder if I've just got a slam in. Drawing a path or a wind of abandon would be our best draw. Oh, it, sorry, I forgot. One, two, three, four, five. Is it only five? Oh, it's... Wait, seven different... Oh, snow-covered to non-snow-covered. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, fuck me then. We need a flyer, I guess. Oh, if someone's packed for a hoof, we just die. The mixture of basics is both clever and just so incredibly tiring because of how fucking lame these cards have been. So that would have been good, but it's not really that good. You can have another zombie if you want. <laughs> oh my god, it's not even a zombie, it's two zombies. <laughs> oh my god, the consistency of their deck. We need an arbiter. We need an Arbiter. Okay. If I attack, they will just, like, gang block down my creatures. So I guess we have to just die? Uh... they got to pay for the Summoner's Pact. One, two, three, four, five, six. They can't hoof us this turn on the upside. They still have a million cards in hand. That's the thing. You, you look at your field and you're like, well, the reason I haven't got cards in hand is because I've played so many creatures out. And then you look at this, like... Yep, Rex Age gets my golem. Yeehaw, cowboy. I guess Feast and Famine off of the Stoneforge is a thing that we can play if we need to beat this deck. Maybe I should be back on the Stoneforge Mystic Plan. Uh, I'm sure. So we need, like, a Restoration Angel that we can hit them twice with. That's what we need. Can we get a Resto Angel that we can hit them twice with? Before they kill us with all these zombies, obviously. Fuck my old boots, honestly. Winds of Abandon doesn't even deal with it. If we had a deck in Stone, which is something I've played in the sideboard a lot, I think deck in Stone is better than Winds of Abandon. We should be playing deck in Stone on our sideboard. Maybe even two copies for this deck and for. Well, there's no other tokens deck in the format, really. No one's playing like Sai or Sahili or. I'll take it. Didn't even block Mathalia for some reason. I was too busy thinking about Sai and Sahili. Those cards are exciting cards. Alright, and that. Don't have any township. Card's good, but it's not win this game good. <sighs> G, G. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've enjoyed my first four in a modern in a while. Um, I still love this deck. It isn't powerful enough to compete against Urza, uh, Field of the Dead, and Oko. Those things are just ludicrous magic cards. Um, I do actually believe that Wizards don't care about modern anymore. It really shows, doesn't it? That Pioneer is their way of fixing modern. Is that the right way to do it? Is the right way to, to fix a format that has problems like Modern does just to abandon it? No. I think that's a really shit way of doing it. But that's where we are. Thanks for watching. I've been Vince. I'll Pleasant Kirby on the internet. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll catch you all very, very soon. Ta-ta for now.